Speaking aloud is not the same as reading silently. So writing for broadcast is naturally not the same as writing for print. Audio and video stories require different styles to tell their stories. Broadcast stories often use a friendlier, more conversational tone, more like bloggers than traditional print journalists. Broadcasters keep it short, simple, and easy to follow. You're writing for the ear, not the eye. That means use active voice, keep subjects and verbs close together, express one idea per sentence, and try to keep sentences to 20 words or less. Broadcast style doesn't use the inverted pyramid form. Now the inverted pyramid starts strong and finishes weak with the least important facts at the bottom of the pyramid. Since broadcast news is tighter, you don't have time for least important facts. Every second counts. So be sure to end strongly on a zinger, summary statements, or some other crucial detail. Use present tense as often as possible. Broadcast news is now, fresh, immediate. Seek story angles that emphasize what's new and what's next, rather than what already happened. The textbook offers a great example of this. While a print story would read a man was hospitalized following an attack, a broadcast story would say he's recovering after being attacked. Again, focusing on the now. In print, you typically wouldn't write contractions. You'd write cannot instead of can't, or will not instead of won't. Since broadcast style mimics how we actually speak, contractions like can't and won't are acceptable. Finally, attributions and quotes require different treatment in broadcast news. In print journalism, you typically put the attribution after the information. While the printed quotation mark makes it clear that something is a direct quotation, you can't see the quotation marks in spoken word. That's why broadcasters generally paraphrase quotations or use sound bites so the audience can actually hear the quotations directly from the source. There are still more differences between print and broadcast style writing. Broadcast style must include phonetic pronunciation. When we read a word, particularly someone's name, we don't really need to know how it's pronounced. If you're saying the word aloud, you do. So adding a pronunciation for any word that might prove difficult is essential. Punctuation should help, not hinder delivery. Avoid hyphenating text at the end of a line and don't split sentences between pages. You can also add extra commas and dashes to indicate longer pauses and what words might need emphasis in your delivery. Avoid abbreviations and symbols. Does ST period mean street or saint? Write out the word dollar instead of using a dollar sign. All of these make it easier for the broadcaster to read aloud. Finally, round off numbers and spell them out. Does it matter that the house costs $199,499? If not, say it cost a little under 200000 The best advice I can give you about the differences between print and broadcast is to write without commas. That forces you to make your sentences shorter and simpler. Now let's see if we can rewrite this print sentence for broadcast. Ari Weston, president of ABNC Bank Corp, was arrested at 8.03 a.m. on suspicion of money laundering, according to Smallville Police. Weston is accused of laundering $199,499. First, we need to rewrite the lead so it's an active rather than passive voice and move the attribution to the front. We then need to rewrite A, B, and C Bank Corporation and add a pronunciation for Ari's name and approximate the time of the arrest and the value of the money laundered, spelling it out so it's easier for a broadcaster to read aloud. Now let's put it all together. Smallville police arrested A, B, and C Bank Corporation President Ari Weston 
just after eight this morning on suspicion of money laundering, $200,000. Easier to read, right? 